Well, uh, I don't want to blind you with, with too many graphs and too much data so soon after you've all eaten your lunch, so I'll, I'll keep this fairly brief and, and fairly philosophical. The topic that I've been given is, is why do we regulate at all and what the philosophy behind the way we regulate should be. And, um, and it, it seemed to me that the answer to this is, a, you know, is fairly simple. We regulate in order to minimize risk insofar as we can, um, and we also do so to maximize opportunity insofar as we can. And that got me thinking that nicotine policy seems to be the only place in which that dichotomy does not hold true. Uh, before I get going, I should, you know, these, these, are, these are my disclosures. Um, but that then got me thinking, what if, uh, what if we regulated other products with the same kind of philosophy that we use to regulate nicotine? So what if we regulated cars in the same way as we regulate nicotine? What if Directive 2014-40 was, was not the Tobacco Products Directive? What if it was the Automotive Products Directive? Well, cars that ran on leaded petrol that were used by 106 million Europeans would remain legal, but in order to discourage their use, they would only be available in the color brown. They'd remain legal everywhere because, you know, they were used regularly, but it would be felt that um, pollution could only really be addressed by getting people to abstain from driving altogether and, and use bikes. And then car seats would be banned across the EU, with, of course, the exception of Sweden, because Sweden had been using car seats cars with seat belts for decades and you know also happens to have much lower rates of road traffic accidents but you know let's gloss over that because for the rest of Europe actually the addition of seat belts was felt to encourage dangerous driving and so we should absolutely get rid of them and then electric vehicles or e-cars as they became known would initially be banned but after much deliberation in Parliament and Council, it was, decide that, it was decided that they would be reclassified as boats. <laughs> and um, as boats, they would only be allowed to have two seats, and uh, the battery would only be allowed to have a circumference of 10 centimetres, because in this parallel universe, that battery means the car has a maximum range of 20 miles. Advertising of electric cars would, of course, be banned lest young people suddenly start to want to use these electric cars. And obviously then, after using the electric car, they might want to move on to a car that uses leaded petrol. And member states would, of course, retain the option to ban electric cars in different colors, again, because they might encourage young people to, to use them. Now, what would the consequences of regulating like, like that be? Well, I mean, at least investors in electric cars would have some certainty, and they would you know, be able to invest with some level of confidence in the category. Um, but a lot of unintended consequences you know, would also quite clearly occur. You would not really reduce the number of accidents. You'd not really reduce the level of, of pollution by any meaningful measure. Um, it wouldn't be a particularly good law for families who have two kids and two adults and would therefore need to buy two electric cars if they wanted to reduce their level of pollution. And pollution would continue to decrease, but it wouldn't decrease at anything quite like the same levels that you would see had electric cars been encouraged. Now, clearly, we don't regulate electric cars like that. And the major difference is that we control for the opportunity as well as for the risk. So, without, any necess without necessarily um, underplaying the risks that electric cars might bring, one can also regulate for the opportunity. And it occurred to me, what if nicotine was regulated in the same way as electric cars, controlling for the opportunity? Well, um, we would, of course, require that manufacturers of electric cars you know, provide some safety data and some data on emissions that would demonstrate their you know, relative efficacy in terms of reducing pollution than regular cars. But when we did that, we would, of course, then not only, not only allow manufacturers to claim that they, redu they reduce pollution, we would insist upon it. In fact, the European Union does insist upon car manufacturers 
putting CO2 emissions on the advertisements for cars. Um, we would make sure that they were cheaper than cars running leaded, that, that we make sure that they're cheaper than running cars running leaded petrol through the tax system, as we could do with tobacco. And all of this would lead to a significant decrease in the number of smokers. So that's basically my message. We need to not only control for the risk in the regulation of nicotine, but we also need to control for the opportunity. And I think if we do that, then we can find ourselves in a much better place than we're currently in. So thank you very much.